Good day everyone and welcome to the Sim Channel for the updated review of the GT Omega Titan SimRig. Before we start, let's quickly get into why I decided to re-review this one just a few weeks after the original review. The Titan that I have is a pre-production unit I received in early 2019 and I was given the impression that there were no major changes between this version and the one that went on sale. So when I originally reviewed it a few weeks ago, I used the pedal mount that came with my pre-production rig and it was showing large amounts of flex to the point where I had to call it a deal breaker. It turns out though that GT Omega had already addressed this issue by reinforcing the pedal mount and had just failed to mention this to me when we discussed the issue in email conversations prior to the review. So when I learned about the revised pedal mount, I reached out to them again and swiftly got the new one sent my way. Since the new pedal mount changes my recommendation for the rig and the older version was possibly never sent out to customers, I decided it's only fair to release an updated review and pull the previous one at the same time that this one goes live. By the way, GT Omega did not ask me to do this, but I want to make sure you're not getting any misleading information from this channel, so here we go. Of course, as always, all thoughts and opinions in this review are my own. If you've already seen the previous version, I'd say you can skip straight to the flex section and take it from there. And if not, welcome aboard! The Titan was released sometime in late 2019 and it's one of four rigs in GT Omega's current lineup. Although it appears that the Pro is being phased out, so the Titan will ultimately take the middle spot between the Art and the Prime. It'll set you back around 350 euros for the frame alone, comes with free shipping and looks to be a very interesting option for anyone looking in the segment. But should you consider it as your next rig? Let's find out! So let me state this outright. To me, the GT Omega Titan is among the prettiest sim rigs out there. It's certainly got the art and pro beat, and on purely aesthetic terms, I think it also beats out most or all aluminum profile rigs. The minimalist look in combination with the thick steel tubing and black powder coating makes it quite suitable for a living room setup. It also goes along very well with a track racer TV stand that you see here. The chrome feet lift it off the ground a little and together with the chrome screws add just the right amount of shine to the rig. Another advantage for a living room setup is the small footprint of the Titan. The frame itself is just 125 by 54 cm and it couldn't realistically get much smaller than this. Note however that depending on your height and setup the pedal mount will most likely stick out of the front end of the frame a little. Moving the rig around is easy. It's pretty lightweight and the felt padded feet protect your floor from scratches, so you won't need a floor mat for it. The simple construction from just two large pieces, front and rear, plus a handful of smaller pieces like the pedal and shifter mounts just complete the impression that this is a really well designed rig. It's easy to assemble, easy to move around and gives you easy access to all the places you need access to. Out of the box, the Titan comes with mounting solutions for a seat, a wheelbase, pedals and a shifter, which is pretty much the standard you'll get with most rigs. Unfortunately, there are literally no further accessories available at this time. And while Art Cockpit, which I believe to be a Chinese sister brand to GT Omega, appears to be selling a monitor mount and keyboard tray for the Titan, these are not available outside of China. I was told a while ago that GT Omega is working on a solution that should add compatibility with their older keyboard and mouse tray and some other accessories like a handbrake mount, but it looks like we'll just have to wait and see what happens. There is no mounting solution for butt kickers, transducers or racing harness available at this time either, so if you want those things on your rig, you'd most likely have to find a DIY solution for it. Overall then, in terms of accessories, the Titan feels somewhat unfinished and I'd hope that this will be addressed sooner rather than later. Seats. The Titan comes either as the frame alone or bundled with one of the three seat options available, the RS6, RS9 and XLRS. If you get the frame alone, it won't come with a seat slider or mounting brackets for bucket seats, so don't forget about those if you want to mount your own seat to it. Both seat sliders and mounting brackets go for around 30 to 40 euros on eBay, tuning shops, etc. and shouldn't be very difficult to get a hold of. In the end, since it's designed for standard seat sliders, you can also mount any standard car seat or bucket seat to the Titan. 
In my setup, I'm using a seat slider I got off of eBay and a bucket seat that I ordered from Merco Seats in Poland a while ago. I already reviewed the seat on this channel, so if you're interested, you'll find the link in the description below. For my opinion on the G2 Mega seat selection, I've discussed that in my G2 Mega Pro buyer's guide, also linked in the description. The TLDR is that the G2 Mega seats are a fair offer, but there are some alternatives that you might want to check out as well. Adjustability and seating position in the Titan are good. The position of the wheel is fixed, except for its height and angle, and you adjust your seat and pedals to match. While the seat is adjusted on the fly with a seat slider, the pedal mount is set up once and then stays fixed in place. Adjusting the wheel's height and angle requires an allen wrench, but it's a quick and straightforward process. Adjusting the pedals takes slightly more effort, but everything is quite accessible and it shouldn't take you too long either. As usual for rigs of this kind, the pedal mount is unfortunately not designed to be used in conjunction with seat sliders, which would provide a much quicker way to adjust the pedal position. In that sense, the rig isn't directed at enthusiasts, but if you insist on it, you can solve this yourself. More on this in a minute. Next, let's talk about the seating position in this rig. For my height, I'm 180 or about 5 foot 11, and for my taste, the seating position is simply spot on. It doesn't provide the same flexibility as aluminum profile rigs, of course, but for what it is, I really wouldn't complain. As you can see here, in my version of this rig, I have to max out the position of the pedal mount on the base plate below, but newer revisions of the Titan come with a base plate extended, so it should work out just fine even for taller people. Overall, in dimensions and adjustability, I would rate the Titan a premium consumer grade rig, not a professional grade one. It's not flexible enough to cover all eventualities, but for most body heights and use cases, it'll do a very good job. Let's get to the topic of flex. This topic gets particularly important once you move up to strong direct drive wheels and load cell pedals, but shouldn't be completely neglected with mid-range gear either. In this section, we'll look at the flex related to the steering wheel, the pedals and the shifter separately. For the record, I've equipped the Titan with a Fnatic DD1, that's a strong 20Nm direct drive wheelbase, a set of Heusingfeld Sim Pedals Pro, these are load cell pedals that max out at 55kg of force at the pedal face, and a Thrustmaster TH8A shifter. Let's start with a wheel. Pulling and pushing on the wheel vertically causes quite a bit of flex, and I'm not even using that much force here. The same, albeit to a lesser extent, can also be observed when pushing and pulling the wheel toward and away from you. Looking at it from the side, we see that the flex is not originating in a single location, but rather across the entire front section of the rig. However, this is more of a synthetic test, and during driving you won't use a lot of force in those directions. Instead, the wheel's force feedback exerts a torsional force on the rig. And under driving, I'd say the flex is reasonably well controlled. Over the time that I've had this rig, I've used it with all kinds of sims and I'm a fan of rather high torque figures, so I'm certainly not going easy on it. By default, I'd set the DD1 up to deliver peak forces between 10 and 40 Newton meters, and then I'd throw in the occasional flex test where I crank it up all the way for peaks around 20 Newton meters. And yet, I never really had any major complaints about the flex in the wheel deck when in the car. Sure, you can feel a difference between the Titan and higher grade rigs such as the Prime or other aluminum profile rigs, especially when using high forces as you see here. After all, the Titan does have some flex and the feedback may feel slightly dampened. But the difference isn't dramatic in my opinion and even with a maxed out DD1, it's never really a big issue. So as far as I'm concerned, the Titan is an adequate choice for direct drive wheels, although not a pro grade solution. The premium consumer grade badge seems to fit here once again. Moving on to the shift amount, my Thrustmaster TH8A doesn't require a whole lot of force even at its stiffest settings, but for this test I'm banging in the gears with quite a lot of thrust, more than I usually would on the normal driving. And as far as I'm concerned, the small amount of flex that you see here can't really be felt haptically. I'd say this is a pretty good result. Finally, the pedal mount. It's a somewhat thin metal plate extending from a double hinge in the front, but it's been reinforced with two steel profiles going across from side to side underneath it. To simulate a range of different pedals, I adjusted the peak force of the brake pedal on my Heusingfeld Pros. Note, however, that the Heusingfeld base plate is mounted on a fairly narrow set of spacers. 
other pedal sets with a base plate sitting flush on the pedal mount, with a wider spacing of the mounting holes may provide additional structural support to the pedal mount and thus reduce the overall flex. The tall and raised Hersingfeld Pros have, compared to shorter pedal sets, quite a bit of leverage over the hinge mechanism at the front. In that sense, they present a bit of a worst case scenario and the flex is likely to be a little less on most of the more affordable pedal sets. Anyway, this test should still be able to give you some impression of the amount of flex you can expect in the Titans pedal plate. Here's with 20 kilos, which should cover just about any standard potentiometer brake pedal, like the entry-level offerings from Logitech, Thrustmaster and Fnatic. The overall amount of flex is nothing to worry about here. It gets a bit wobbly when quickly going on and off the throttle or clutch, but this effect should be considerably reduced on those smaller pedal sets. Let's go to 30 kilos, which should just about cover the Thrustmaster TLCM, Fnatic CSL Elite and Club Sport pedals. And before you get angry comments, yes, their load cells are rated higher, but that number is only really relevant to marketing departments. It's the force at the pedal face that counts, and that should max out at around 30 kilos for all of these pedal sets. Anyway, I would rate the flex here acceptable, especially keeping in mind that structurally the HE Pros present a worst case scenario, but judge for yourself. And finally, here is 55 kilos, the maximum the Heusingwald Pros will do. This amount of flex is definitely noticeable and it will make your brake pedal feel a little softer than it otherwise would. But the flex is at least fairly consistent and the mount doesn't give off any squeaks or rattles. So despite the deflection you can actually drive like this and your lap times won't really suffer all that much. So I don't consider this a deal breaker, but it is something that personally I'd be looking to fix before long. And so I decided to design my own pedal mount made from aluminum profiles. With this in place, the flex is reduced to almost nothing. There's a tiny bit of flex left that's originating in the rig's frame, but it's not really noticeable. For all intents and purposes, this solution makes for a rock-solid pedal mount. Another advantage is that this way you can even mount a seat slider under the pedals for quick adjustability. So if you want the Titan but you're concerned about the pedal mount, you'll find a list of the parts that I used for mine in the description under this video. Feel free to get creative here and adapt the solution for your pedal set and preferred seating position. Unfortunately, at around 100 euros give or take for the materials and shipping, it is a bit of a pricey fix. Let's start this final section with a summary of the pros and cons. The GT Omega Titan looks elegant and very pleasing overall. It is lightweight, making it very easy to move around, and it has a small footprint. These properties make it a pristine solution for a living room setup. It further provides a very good seating position, the wheel and shift amount are quick and easy to adjust, and it's suitable for use with load cell pedals and direct drive wheels. However, the wheel deck may show some flex in high torque settings, and the pedal mount also flexes noticeably with premium class load cell pedals. Finally, at the time of this review, there are no accessories available. At the very least, it's currently lacking a handbrake mounting option and a keyboard and mouse tray. Overall, I'd say this is a good rig, albeit not a flawless one. I used this as my main rig for quite a while, and once I had the pedal mount fixed, I really liked it for its great design, excellent seating position, and for just being easy to live with. The flex in the wheel deck isn't ideal, but not a very big problem either. I can recommend the Titan for anyone sporting a Logitech or a Thrustmaster setup, and in Fnatic's lineup, I'd say it's a really good match for both the CSL Elite and Club Sport line. It will even allow you to upgrade to a strong direct drive wheelbase and a premium pedal set, although it does begin to show some signs of struggle when maxing these out. In terms of the value proposition, I'd say it's very much a fair deal at this price point. With regards to competitors, there are at least two that I think need to be mentioned here. First, there's the Simlab GT1 EVO, which is only slightly more expensive before shipping and quite a bit more expensive after shipping, but also definitely more rigid, more adjustable and not as pretty, in my opinion. And then there's the Trek Racer RS6, which is also made from steel tubing and thus has a similar aesthetic appeal to the Titan. It's priced only marginally higher and at the time of this review also comes with free shipping. And while the free shipping appears to be a time-limited promotion for the RS6, the seat slider and brackets come included with this one. To me, the RS6 looks like a strong competitor to the Titan and definitely worth a look. 
Now, if you're looking to buy either the Titan or the RS6 and you feel like supporting this channel, please consider buying via the affiliate links in the description below. And let me know in the comments if you'd like me to review the RS6 here on this channel. One additional note at the end. Unfortunately, Brexit is still causing issues at the EU borders at the time of making this review, and G2 Omega is currently not shipping to the EU for that reason. If you're from the EU and watching this review sometime after Q2 2021, it may be worth checking out gtomega.eu to see if things have gone back to normal by now. And if you've made it this far into the video, I'm going to assume that you enjoyed it, so don't forget to hit like, subscribe and ring the bell. And that's all for today, so thank you for spending this time with me, be safe and I'll see you in the next one.